there, some sitting there this morning, deciphering, uh, sitting there reading, just bouncing through, really don't uh, have, have much on my heart, but uh, we'll go and see what the Lord puts upon us. Uh, I preached this the other day, I, I don't know, maybe we mentioned it, maybe we stood down here, I'm not sure about the, uh, uh, where Moses was there in Exodus 17, and uh, starts around, actually, no, 17 and 8, actually, and uh, whenever we look at the, at the Lord, we need to understand what the Lord is, He's God of us all, and uh, we was, I was thinking, you know, I, I don't know, <clears throat> You know, sometimes say, "Well, I don't, I don't know why, why this happened or that happened." Really, you know, why not? Really, when it gets down to it, uh, whenever we look at look at our lives and we, we understand that we have no control over anything, then I start thinking, you know, and uh, and I say it myself and, and other people, and, and whenever I say, it, "Well, I don't know why God saved me," but I do. I'm honest with this because He loves me. That's why He saved me. Amen. And without that love of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I couldn't be saved. I couldn't make heaven my home without Him leading me, guiding me, directing me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Um, I'm blessed in nothing but through my hand, my hand, something. I'm a son of the living King, the only God whereby I must be saved. We know that problems and trials are going to be upon us, and we're getting slow and slow of movement, and sometimes slow of thought, too, you know. But thank God that this man named Jesus Christ gives us a home on time to make sure that we have something better within ourselves and make sure that we can go to the other side. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Make sure that we can get to the other side knowing that those things are going to be there anyway. But, you know, when we look at it, you know, the, the Lord tells us, you know, we can be out in the wilderness and we can be out walking around, we can be whatever. But when we start to drink of the waters, you know, the waters of the world, the waters that, that we drink of sometimes are bitter. And there's a branch out there that whenever we look at that branch, a tree that is out there, that whenever that tree is there, we can take of that tree and we can put it in the waters that we drink. It will make that water what? It will make it sweet. And that branch is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we're out in the world and the world is trying to bombard us with garbage and trash and false teachings and this garbage and, and things of the world that they want us to turn away from Christ. They tell you that there's another way. And we eat, drink that water sometimes. And sometimes you can't help it. Sometimes, you know, it's just there in front of you, bombarded with it. And maybe it could be your head somewhere where it shouldn't be or just sitting there watching television or whatever it is. Even in church, sometimes my mind goes places that it shouldn't go, but it does something like that. But I can always go back and drink of the water that flows <coughs> from the God. And that branch, that man named Jesus Christ, makes that water sweet. And whenever I'm getting thirsty, I can always go back to that water that flows from the throne of God. As we're looking at things, we look at the, the, the things in our lives, we look at where we come from, we know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. We hear it preached and taught all the time. But how do we know that? It's through by what? The Spirit. The Spirit tells us. You can hear me preach it, and if the Spirit doesn't back it up, it doesn't mean that he'll be. But if the Spirit backs it up, it means everything, because it comes from the throne of God. And the Bible tells us, and the word proceedeth out of the mouth of God is for correction and reproof and things like that to show us the way to help us understand and get the garbage and trash of the world out of our lives, knowing that these things are going to be there. And whenever Joshua was there, Moses was there, and Abimelech came out and he was going to fight with Joshua and them, and Israel was there and they were going to fight. And so Moses is there, so he and uh, Laura and Aaron go up on top of the mountain. And whenever Amelia is there and they're fighting with Israel, he starts to overtake them. And what does Moses do? Moses goes up on the mountain with Aaron order, and they go up there, and Moses, whenever he starts praising God and raising his hand, then Israel starts winning out. Israel starts to conquer the the the, the uh, Miliac and, his, and his armies and stuff. And when we look at it in our lives, when we get down in the in the, in the false teachings, the garbage of the world starts coming up on us, and it starts to take us over. But whenever we raise our hands and give praise to God, what happens? We start winning out, right? We start winning out. We start getting that victory back in our lives. We start growing, growing closer to God. <coughs> Excuse me. But whenever we start looking at it, also. Moses was there and he holds up his hand and they were winning, but he said, what does he do? He starts getting weak. He starts getting tired. And we as, we as Christians sometimes, we get tired ourselves, right? We get tired because, oh, woe is me. Oh, woe, Lord, why do these problems come upon me? Why I have to battle this? I have to do that. I'm getting weak in spirit. I'm getting weak in body. But thank God that through by the Spirit, I can grow stronger in Jesus Christ. I can eat of the Word of God and fulfill this inward man's knowing that those things are going to what sustain me through this life and the life to come. And that's what we're 
we're working for is the life to come. This body right here is going to die. The Bible tells us that the spirit of the, of, of, of the man goes up. You know, the, the spirit of the, the one that is saved goes back to God. But the beast goes back into the earth. It goes back into the dirt. And it's not talking about a dog or anything like that. It's talking about what? It's talking about the ones that are lost. They go into a devil's hell. We're looking for throwing our lives. We were in the same hell there for a long time, 30-some years for me. But thank God that Christ reached down and brought me up out of the depths of hell and showed me the way. And thank goodness that whenever I needed prayer, somebody was there praying for me. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't want those things. And somebody mentioned to me, said, if you need Christ, I didn't even want to talk about it. But thank goodness that somebody was there <coughs> praying for me. Man, I didn't even know who it was. And they tell you in their lives. We may not know who we're praying for. Somebody may come up to us and we give a good word to somebody. And we may never see anybody saved in their lifetime throughout their Christian life. But thank God that if we're living a Christian life, they can see that and their water or, 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 or light will shine at someone that can see that they need Jesus Christ in their life. We may never see anybody come up to the altar here in this church, but thank God through them by the preaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and through them by yours to what your life that you live and that light that you shine out here in the world. They may get saved somewhere and that's their due diligence because it may be some of my family that is out here talking to you and you need to give them Jesus Christ every time that you can. You need to not browbeat them with it because sometimes when we browbeat people and try to force them upon them, what do they do? That makes them even harder and they turn away from it. But show them the love and grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And Moses is there with them upon top of the mountain. And every time he would let his hands down, they would start to what? Israel would start to take it. What? They were getting conquered. They were starting to lose out the battle. But thank God that every time we as Christians, every time we let our what? We let our spirit down through by Jesus Christ. We forget our praise of our Lord. We start to what? We start to lose the battle. But we can always go back and go to what? To Jesus Christ. We can always go back to the battle because the battle is going to be there. They're always going to be there. But as long as I give him praise from the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, like me and Paul was sitting up here talking earlier, if I give him praise and glory, I'm going to win out. And so Moses is there and he's raising his hands and he starts to get weird. And so Aaron is there and Ur is there on the other side. And what do they do? They hold his hands up. Every time they would go down, Israel would start losing. But every time that they would raise his hands, and they were there to what? They were there to help him and they said, Set him on a what? Set him on a rock. It wasn't a rock out here like a piece of sandstone. He was sitting on Jesus Christ. Thank God that he was. Because he was there praying for Israel that they could get through. And we're part of the Israel. We're not the land of Israel. But we're part of the spiritual Lord of our land of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We're part of Israel. We are the Jews of our Lord because we are the chosen people. Because the Bible tells us many are called but few are chosen. And thank goodness that the ones that are called have the same opportunity to us that are chosen. Say, so, well, we're chosen. Why? The only reason we're chosen is because we accepted Jesus Christ in our lives. That's the only thing that separates us from the lost and dying. We just we accepted Christ in our life. We saw something and he knocked on their heart's door. Just like he knocked on everybody's door of their heart. He showed them this exact same thing. And that little bit of faith is in their heart that they can what? Step out on faith and believing that he is the way, the truth, and the life. That with doing by him I can have salvation. I can conquer the world. But every time I start letting my hands down, even though I may be there, I start getting weak. But Moses is sitting on a rock, and they're, and they're there, they, what do they do? They hold his hands up. And we as Christians, excuse me, we as Christians, we have to do the same thing. You see, Brother Paul, getting a little bit weak, i got to set him down on what? Jesus Christ. And I have to help, brother. I have to help you hold up your hand and praise the Lord. So when we see a brother or sister out here that is getting weak in Jesus Christ, we need to take one step up and let them sit on Jesus Christ and put them on the rock, not a rock, the only rock whereby we must stand that is never ever what wavered in the floods and battles upon this world. The waters may slosh up against it and stuff, but that rock will never be moved because it has never settled for the foundation of the world. The Bible tells us that the blood of the Lamb was slain from the foundation of the world in Revelation. So that means that Jesus Christ, the blood was applied from the beginning of time. So he is the only way whereby we have to get into the gates of glory. He was not looking at us to kill bulls and bullets and turtle doves and stuff because he had died from the beginning of the world. The blood was applied through him by Jesus Christ that we could get what? Saved him. You say, well, I don't say it like that. That's what the word of Revelation tells us. Through him by John, who's what? Had the revelation of who? Jesus Christ. Because what? It was the foundation of the world. And this man named Jesus Christ was from the beginning. And John 1, you mentioned it there a while ago. In the beginning was what? The Word. And it was God. And that God is Jesus Christ with the Father and with the Spirit. Because one is the same and same is the one. There's no separating. And thank goodness that there is. And there was nothing made that was made that he didn't what? That he didn't make. 
Because he made everything. Through him by that, we know that we can be saved. We look upon the things of the world, and the Bible tells us there's nothing new under the sun. So we look at the sin of the world, and we say, well, it's getting worse. Hey, it is. But look at how it was before. It was just the exact same thing. It just brought out to where we could see it even more. Because the things and sins of the world, people don't try to hide it no more because it's been accepted into the world. The sin and garbage and trash of the world are being accepted as a lifestyle. And it's not a lifestyle. All it is is sin. If it's sin in the beginning of the Word of God in Genesis, it's sin in the end of the Word of God in Revelation when He said, Surely I what? I come quickly. And once He comes, it's over with. And let's say that a uh, hundred years or a thousand years from now, that's still a speck of uh, a bucket, a drop of, uh, of, of whatever sand on, on the seashore. But the thing about it, it's forever and ever, eternity is. And if Christ comes back, where is your heart? If you're saved in Jesus Christ, you're going to be okay. But if you ain't got Christ in your life, you're going to a devil's hell. So if Moses is there, I mean, uh, and he's sitting there, and he's being a little bit ahead because he's starting to get weak physically, we as Christians, we get weak physically and spiritually. So we need to look at one another. And that cross, that cross there is this representation. We what? One on one side and one on the right. Right? One on the left and one on the right. And whatever you look at it, whatever you look at the cross, we look at the cross where Christ was there. That was a man on the right and one on the left also, right? But now think about it also. Where does that cross? He goes plumb down into the dirt. He goes plumb down into the earth. And it reached down and it brought me up, right? It brought me up from the depths of hell. And one on the right side and one on the left. Now think about it also on the spiritual side. That's exactly what he's talking about on the spiritual side. But let's go back just a little bit deeper what the Lord put it on us. There's two of them there, right? One on one side and one on the other. Now think about the cross. The cross is there and it's stretched out and our Lord and Savior was on what? Nailed to the cross. His hand and feet were nailed to an old rugged cross, an old dogwood tree, and they stuck it down into the ground. There was one on the right and one on the left. Now think about it. The one on the left did not accept Christ, right? He's dead. Yeah. But the one on the right accepted Christ because he said they put his what? His sheep on the right. And the goats and stuff going to be on the left. Now think about this also. We're at Jordan, right? We're at the River Jordan. We're talking about life and death. Now think about it. Now we cross over. One is what? One is it now? Boom, I'm dead. This whole body is gone. But the second man over on the right side is in the gates of glory with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's what we're working for. Because before, I was nothing. And through by Jesus Christ, I am something. But there's nothing within me. It's only through by Jesus Christ. So when death finds me, so shall the judgment. So if the judgment finds me with Jesus Christ in my life, being covered by the blood of the Lamb, who is only one whereby I must, it doesn't say I can go out here and worship Muhammad and Buddha and all these other religions. It doesn't say that, oh, give me your money and you'll be okay. It doesn't say you live any lifestyle you want to and say three Hail Marys and this and that, you'll be okay. It doesn't say that. He says you have to come through by the Son and the only Son. He didn't give to a three of his Son. He gave the only begotten Son and his name was Jesus Christ who was born in Bethlehem on that morning or that evening or whatever. And whenever he was born, not only did the kings and stuff, the wise men sought him out, but not only them, but what did he do? The shepherds was seeking out this man named Jesus Christ because they knew that there was something there. The leaders of the sheep, right? We look at it as being uh, the little four-legged lambs and stuff out here. The leaders of the churches, the leaders of the preachers and teachers of the churches was seeking out this man named Jesus Christ to go out and preach the gospel. And the wise men of the world knew that there was something special in him and Simeon himself said he should not die until what? He saw who? The Christ child. And he picks him up just like this right here. He raised him up, didn't he? In glory to let what the world see. That he is the Christ child. Not only do we hang him on a cross, but we raised him up, right? And that's exactly what Moses is right here doing. Moses is there, and he's sitting there, and he's getting weak. He's getting tired. He may be getting a little bit tired in spirit, because Israel is women. And whenever we think the battle is won, sometimes what? We take our guard down, right? But he said he started getting weary, and they raised his hands up. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when we start getting weary, it's our responsibility. We see a brother or sister getting weary. We it's our responsibility now to go to them and set them on a rock, Jesus Christ, and help raise their hands in glory to get them back where they need to be. 
And it's hard to sometimes. Because I'm hard-headed and I don't want to listen sometimes. Oh, woe is me. That's exactly right. But it's my responsibility, if I see you there, to give you a good word and show you that Christ still loves you. No matter what you're going through, no matter how bad it may be, no matter how bad this world may be treating you, this man named Jesus Christ is still sitting on the throne. He's not up there wringing his hands saying, oh, what's going to happen next? He spoke it into existence in the very beginning of this, and he's going to speak it out in the end of the time of revelation and he said surely I come quicker so if that is the case we need to get our hearts where it needs to be because without the love of Christ we can't get in and the mercy has already brought me up from the depths of hell and if there's a separation that separation of that gulf that is there at the garden of Eden the cherubim that sat there in the flaming swords that's the word of God that separates us but that gulf is the blood of Christ that nothing can cross except it has to come through the blood to get into the gates of glory nothing from hell
And when everybody's in the depths of hell, you too now. There he was, wasn't he? The Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. And he reached down and saved us. And brought us up. Well, it, 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 it may not be an easy, it may be an easy whatever. You may have struggled against the Spirit. You may still struggle against the Spirit. But God's will be done. Whether we like it or not, it's going to be done. Because this thing, the Bible tells us that he spoke it into existence. And the Bible says that he's going to fight the battles with what? The word of his mouth. He's not going to come and swarp and fight. Why should he? He's God. And besides him, he says, there is none other. And so if my God gives me that power to fight the battles, I can call on the word of God and fight those battles. Because why? He gave us that power to do that, to call on God to take and what? Help me win these problems and trials in my life. To show me that there is something better in me. And it's not me or you, Brother Paul, but it's Jesus Christ. But Paul, how you doing? You doing you a good fellow? Paul said, no. But Jesus is good in me. Yeah. And that's all we have is Jesus Christ. And if you're here and you're lost, you need Jesus Christ. If you're here and you're a Christian, you need Jesus Christ. Yeah. You need to take and seek out him while we can. While we're in our youth. And he's talking about whenever I'm getting young and old and age-wise, that too. But no, he's talking about when I'm a young Christian, but I better be seeking him out because and understand the Word of God because why? The problems are going to come up on us, right? Whenever you first got saved, you remember whenever you first got saved, how great it was? It's not changed. It's still great, right? What has changed? Right here. I have changed. I'm the one that has changed. The salvation was still there, and it saved me, and it was so great. I mean, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a, I didn't hear a bunch of voices and this, that. I heard the Lord hammering me and showing me I needed a way, and he was the way. You know, it wasn't some big spectacular things, that, uh, you know, and all of this, but it's through my Jesus Christ. I saw that I needed a Savior, you know, and, and we worried about the things and problems and trials, and we look at that, you know, that had the eclipse there the other day, and everybody's worried about it. Oh, it's going to be the end of time. If it's the end of time, Jesus Christ said it's the end of time. Right. Ain't nothing we can do. But you know what? That's just the power of God. That's just the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let it come through, dark it out, and go on again. Seeing the power of God. And he said, we can call on that power, right? He says that. He says that in the Word. We can call on that power. For a healing. We can give the deaf what they're hearing through my, the word of God. Well, they can't hear the word. We can give to them spiritually. Not saying we're going to heal their physical hearing, no, but they're deaf to the word of God. They can hear it. They're unlearned. Just because they can't hear doesn't mean you can't be saved. Because you can't see doesn't mean you can't be saved. You can see with spiritual eyes. None of us have seen God, but through by the Spirit, each and every one of us have seen the same Jesus Christ that we're saved. Amen. The exact same Jesus Christ. Not another. Paul didn't get saved down here on the creek back somewhere with a different God than what I did. It had to be Jesus Christ crucified on the cross and being lifted up through each and every one of us. Knowing that, we can be saved and we can preach and teach Jesus Christ to this lost and dying generation, okay? We worry about that and that's exactly right. We need to get them take them what? Take them about Jesus Christ and try to get them saved. But also, we keep forgetting who? Ourselves. We have to pray for one another because we get what? Just like Moses, we get tired sometimes and we have to be there for one another and let each other see that the love of God is in what? In us. And it does. Sometimes that love of God tells Paul, you messed up, honey. And I have to tell him. So you got to do this, this, and this. It's what the Word of God said. So Saul did it to Peter, didn't he? Rebuked him what? Openly. Yeah. Openly rebuked him. And told him, Peter, that ain't the way. That's not what the Word of God said. And Nicodemus was with Christ. Sitting there with Christ. And he was a scholar. He was a sense of a mother of all. You know, he was a scholar leading the church. He did not understand the Word of God spiritually. He was unlearned in the spiritual meaning of the Word of God. Well, he knew a lot more than I did. I'm not saying anything. <coughs> anybody knows anything knows more than I do. But the thing about it, the Lord has helped me see it on the spiritual side so I can see Jesus Christ. I know that I don't have to enter my mother's womb again to be saved. But I do have to enter my 
church mother's womb to be saved. Because if I did, I couldn't be saved, Brother Paul. I have to be saved by the blood of God, Jesus Christ. And he said, well, do I have to enter my mother's womb? And the Lord told him, he said, you must be born again. And he said, I must enter my mother's womb. No, Nicodemus he said, you're, you're a scholar, you know all of this, but you can't comprehend this. You don't understand. It's spiritual. You have to enter your mother's womb spiritually. You have to be born again. So we enter the church womb, and we get born through by the blood of Jesus Christ. Because my blood can't save you. Paul's blood can't save you. Bulls and bullets and, and heifers and turtle doves and dogs and cats cannot save you. It's only the blood of Jesus Christ. It has to be applied to your sins to cleanse you from within out. Because once you get saved, you may be dirty on the outside. Because whenever Samuel was there, and, and, and David him, and the Lord told him, said, don't look on his outside appearance. So look on the inside. David was ready to do battle. He just a ruddy kid. And, and they told him, don't look on the outside. Look on the inside. Because he was rooted and grounded in who? Jesus Christ. But he had a great battle ahead of him, didn't he? And he put the armor on. He even tried other armor, right? He tried other armor that the king had given him. And it did not fit him. He said, this ain't been tried. There's a lot of things in the world, a lot of armors of the world, Brother Paul, a lot of false teaching and garbage and trash that is being tried to draw us away, to try to take and stand up against the wiles of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They can't do it. But the only battle armor that can stand up and carry us to the other side is Jesus Christ, the blood. And it will take and deliver you from yourself. So those two, those two olive branches, those two, or those two uh, trees that are on one side of the river on this side and one side on the other side, right here on this side is, is life, right? This whole body is going to die one day. And the only way I can get to the other side, of, the only other side is through my heart, Jesus Christ. So the spiritual man has to live and make it across Jordan on the other side. There's a time now. Think about that now. There's a time now that we're in, right? And this this hallway or this walkway right here is Jordan. I have to get on the other side, and how do I get to the other side? Is the hereafter to go by Jesus Christ? Think about that. Think about where you are today, and think about where you're going to be tomorrow. And think about for eternity. A thousand years from now, you know, a hundred years from now, none of us will probably be here. So we're going to spend eternity with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the depths of hell with the devil and his angel. Lost to the die of hell. Going, going down. No, we're already there because death is found us. We're not going to go there one day. Once death finds us, the Bible tells us, so shall the judgment. And if the judgment finds me unjust in the will of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that means what? I'm gone forever. <coughs> That's say for a thousand years or million years, it says for eternity. Knowing those problems or trials are still going to be there, probably people want to tell you that it's okay, we'll be there with your friends, and you probably will. Probably will be there with a bunch of friends, but you ain't going to know it. But none of that junk matters. The only thing that matters is that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, and today is the day of salvation.